Hey there, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my studio. There's a new addition in my studio as of uh, this week, I guess. Back there in the corner behind me, I've been spending the last couple of weeks building a Voron 3D printer. It's a Voron 2.4. I call this one the Voron Unit 1 uh, because of the color scheme. Evangelion fans will figure that out. Um, and this video is not about building a Voron printer, although it was a fun process. And if you want to find videos about that, there are plenty of other creators on YouTube who've, who've uh, recorded videos of the process of building one of those printers. I learned a lot in the process for sure. This video is about filament storage because one thing that this printer allows me to do that I could never do before is print with higher temperature filaments. So before I was pretty much always printing with PLA, sometimes a little bit with PETG with varying degrees of success on my, on my previous printer. And this printer can print at higher temperatures and it's enclosed, right? So it can print things like ABS, which I've been printing a lot of in the last week or so and I really enjoy and want to use more. Um, it can also print uh, flexible filaments, TPU, uh, other things like that. So, and, and nylon eventually as well is, is something that I want to uh, play around with printing. The thing with those types of filaments though is that they have a tendency to absorb moisture from the air if you store them in a humid environment. And then that affects the printing later on, right? Because the, the moisture content in the filament will actually bubble and pop when it heats up and can cause issues with your prints. So I wanted to find a way to store this filament uh, in, a, in a dry sort of container or something uh, because my studio here um, is in the corner of my garage. It's a little enclosed space that I built um, and it does have some air conditioning, some climate control, but that generally is only running while I'm in here and I, I leave it turned off when I'm not in here. And so it does get quite hot and humid in here, uh, especially during the summertime because I live in a climate that's, that's pretty warm and humid outside. And so like right now on my desk, I have a, a sensor that's telling me that uh, it's currently 80 degrees Fahrenheit in here and it's about 56% humidity. So, and that's with the AC running, it's been running in here for the last couple of hours while I've been in here working. So uh, when the AC is off, it gets, gets even higher than that. So I wanted a storage solution to uh, try to keep my filament dry. I've looked at a few different things and I've come up with uh, the solution that I've landed on here that I think I'm going to be using going forward. Um, I'll let you know how it goes if, if that changes in the future, but I, I think this is fairly promising and this is something that I'm going to continue using. Um, and it's based on these storage containers that are designed for, I think, holding like cereal um, and other dry goods in your kitchen. Um, this idea originally came from a video by Josh Murrah, so uh, shout out to him. It was a couple of years ago, and I'm not sure if that was his original idea or if he got the idea from someone else, but that's as far back as I could trace it. Um, and then a few other people have uh, sort of remixed the idea and released parts and things on printables.com related to using these containers uh, for storing your filament. And so I'll link to some of those things down in the description below if you want to go check out you know, the original content that this idea came from. And then I've modified it a bit since then uh, to make it work for what I'm doing. So uh, let's switch over here to my other view and I'll show you guys what uh, what I'm doing with this. So these containers, um, like I said, you can get them on Amazon. Um, they're fairly simple and they have this nice airtight lid with a seal that, that seals on here. Now these fit just about every single kind of filament that I've tried. Um, so I have a few different brands and, and rolls of filament that I've tried in here and they all fit just fine. So like the, here's this uh, Fusion ABS that I, I'm gonna use for this example. And it fits in here pretty nicely. Um, there's you know some space down here and some space up there and we're going to use that uh, for some of the desiccant that we add in later on um, and then you can seal the top right so we could just pour some desiccant or put some desiccant packets in this container and call it a day and we'd be good to go right um, and it should keep the humidity down inside of this container I wanted to be a little bit fancier than that and also humid air rises um, so as the air dries out in this container, it's likely that the, the more humid air is going to be near the top. So I'd like to have my desiccant up near the top of this, of this container if possible. And so what I'm using for desiccant is this. Um, it's uh, silica gel beads, um, again came from Amazon. These things are orange. Um, and then they turn a nice dark green color when they get full of moisture. And so it's real easy to tell when you need to swap them out. Um, so we could just pour this down here in the bottom of the container and be done, um, but I wanted something a little nicer than that. And so what I've designed is 
this printable part, actually it's a couple different parts, um, but this is uh, prints in place with no supports, so it prints just like so on your build plate. Um, and then it has a couple of different optional lids, and we'll take a look at those in a minute. But we can pour some of this silica gel, the, these beads, into this container. Let me try to do this here on camera without making any spills. There we go. Just fill that up. I might have overfilled it slightly. No, it's all right. A couple of these fell on the floor. In my in my studio here, they fall on the floor and I can't find them because I have like a light wood colored uh, floor in here and uh, they're orange and so they don't show up. But as soon as they absorb moisture and turn green, then I find them. So uh, yeah, now we've got that filled up and then you can put this lid on here. So this is a print in place piece as well. Just print sitting like that and you can just snap this right on and you're done, right? Now we could put this in here and it actually hangs in the front, right? It'll hang like this, so it stays out of the way of the roll of filament. Um, or you can optionally print this other piece, which is meant to hold a humidity sensor. And so these, again, I got in a multi-pack, I think it was a pack of 12 um, off of Amazon and they're simple. Um, they don't seem super accurate. Um, they're fairly accurate. Like I said, my, my sensor is saying it's over 50% humidity in here at the moment. Um, but this is saying 48. It was also just now in this container for a while uh, sealed up. So um, yeah, it might be, yeah, it's, it's actually adjusting as we look at it here. Anyway, these things clip into this part that you can print and um, it just fits in here nice and flush and presses back and clips in. So there's these two little notches here on the side that you can press in those clips if you ever need to pop it out and a hole in the back that you can push because these do have a battery that you can change. So at some point I'll have to pop these out and change the batteries. Um, there, now it's 54%, which is way more accurate um, to what I'm seeing on my, on my better quality sensor here on my desk. So, and then we can just pop this down on the top of this and it holds the uh, silica gel beads nicely in place. So now we have this unit and we can put it right here in the top of our container. The way that works is these containers have a pour spout built in just like so. So this flips open and there's a nice rubber seal around it. This is real easy to pull out. So you just grab it and pull it right out and then you can toss that away. And then this is designed to fit right down inside here. I'll get you a side view so you can see. So it presses down here, seals really nicely against that rubber seal. So it's gonna be airtight. And then we can just pop this down over the top here and close it just like that. So if I could get the front to close, that'd be cool too. All right, there we go. So yeah, this uh, it hangs in here in such a way that it doesn't impede the filament, even if the spool is quite full. Um, I haven't had any issues with it running into the filament in there. And I think that it's doing a really good job of uh, keeping things nice and dry. Now you'll see this one's showing 53% humidity right at the moment um, because we just put it in there. I've got this other roll of filament over here um, that I finished yesterday. So it's been just under 24 hours and this one's showing, it's already down to you know around 20%. So it's doing, a, I think, a quite good job so far of keeping these things dry. Um, now what, what I've decided to do with these is I'm printing these lids um, and these containers for the desiccant in whatever color and type of filament that I'm storing in each of the bins. So the nice thing about that is I line these up on my shelf and these also serve as a sample of that filament once it's printed. So you can look across and you can see you know, what, what color you're picking out. And then also these bins came with uh, labels that you can stick on here and a little white marker that you could write um, something on. So I'm just writing the brand and the type. So this is Fusion ABS. I've got some Sunlu ABS over there as well. Um, and that way, I, when I pull them off the shelf, I know which uh, slicer, because I've got presets saved in my slicer for these different brands of filament, um, I can pull up the, the correct preset to slice a file to then send it to the printer. So the, the idea is to keep these things um, in these bins as much as possible to take the filament out and put it on the printer when it's needed and then you know just switch it back to um, or take it off and put it back in the bin as soon as I'm finished so these these won't be sitting on the printer in the atmosphere soaking up 
any more humidity than they need to. Um, now, of course, these rolls of filament, I could dry out as well by heating them up um, if they do end up absorbing too much moisture. Uh, but I'm hoping that by storing them in this type of a situation that I can just prevent them from absorbing moisture in the first place and then they'll, they'll print all the way through the life of that roll of filament without any issues. Uh, yeah, so that's the solution. Like I said, I'll, I'll check back with a video in the future if this isn't working or if I find uh, any improvements or changes that I want to make to the system. But right now, this is how I'm going to store the filament. It's going to line up on the shelf down there underneath the printer, um, and I can see all the colors and I can monitor the humidity levels inside of each of the containers and then pull them out when I need them and um, you know use them and put them back in. So I will put in the video description down below uh, links to uh, these products on Amazon. So the, the containers, the silica gel beads, the little uh, humidity sensors that I used. Um, there's a lot of similar products out there on Amazon. So you can shop around and, you know, maybe find them for a cheaper price, depending on what you find there. I think the important thing is to, for these containers, make sure that they're, they have these three vertical uh, ribs along the one side, and then they have this hexagonal pattern in the lid. If you find containers that have that style, they'll definitely fit with what I've designed here. And like I said, there are a few different manufacturers that make that style of container. So you can shop around and find what you want. Um, those Amazon links are not affiliate links and I'm not uh, you know, being sponsored or anything by any of these products. They were just what I found useful. Um, so clicking on those links doesn't help me out at all. Uh, but if you do want to help me out and if you've watched this far, I'd appreciate a like down on the video and, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already um, for more 3D printing content and also Gunpla building content um, in the future. And actually some crossovers between the two. I've got some projects planned for that Voron Unit 1 back there. Um, that are related to Gunpla as well as 3D printing. So uh, those will be coming on the channel soon. Uh, until then, I hope you have a good day and I will see you next time.